Hello and welcome to the Renatomy of Dota. What is Dota 2? What is this curio's little game that emerged from a simple mod from Warcraft 3? Well let me tell you brother it's probably one of the best games that never should have seen the light of day. You see, for every joyous moment you feel in Dota, you will also endure the same crippling sadness after an undeserved loss. But let's dive into Gay Ben's gift to the world. Let's understand why this game somehow never seems to cease to exist, and what its fanbase love, hate, and generally feel towards this never-ending fever dream. Chapter 1, The Heroes, Roles, and Items You draft 5 out of 124 heroes, and ensure the best way to victory, unless you are a one-trick like me, and pick Brewmaster religiously. You pick either one of two support roles, who will function as psychologists of Thank the group, and keep their core's egos in check, a utility core which can usually be flexed on either offlane or mid, a sort of tempo creating core and a hard juicy carry. Either way, there is always the 5 carry C strat. It surely never failed, right guys? Anyhow, there is a grand total of 208 items in Dota, some of which are active or passives and can only be obtained by killing jungle creeps, you get the choice from 1 out of 5 from a predetermined set, and oh boy you better hope RNG won't snap your neck, by giving you trash items and the enemy's god tier items. The rest of the items are either bought in your base, the enemy's base or the so called secret shops. Dota veterans remember the side shop. Of course you can buy any item on any hero, however there is more obvious synergies and beginner friendly item guides to help you out. With that being said, let's continue to the next chapter, where I further elaborate on this minor madness. Chapter 2, The Basics. Dota at its core, is supposed to be, a team oriented wreck it ralph simulator in which you want to collect an overwhelming advantage in gold and xp compared to the enemy team. You, and the other 9 poor souls who are deemed to meet each other in that specific lobby you find yourself in, all have the same objective. Destroy the big shiny on the other side of the map. You and your 4 new friends have to organize in the pre-game stage a thoughtful strategy. After picking your heroes, your lane and Roly will have the happy task to get through the laning stage. But what exactly is the laning stage? Well it's the funny thing, where you face off in either a typical 2v to lean, god forbid you go mid, and lose because you will lose all your street credibility, your house, your wife and more importantly, a video game, probably, and try to win it. Winning can be very dependent on what you are playing, if you're already in a bad matchup not dying, can already be a success, however if you should dominate a lane, and you basically have the same level and gold as the enemies, yikes dog that's not great once the laning stage is over, whenever that actually is, and you decide to walk around is where the real fun begins, and you will feel the crushing weight of you either winning a team fight and your team ignoring the objectives, or losing a fight and your team slowly descent into madness. If you reach the so called late game it's usually an all out brawl where every small decision can make or break the game. Patience is key here. Chapter 3. Impact. What do I mean with impact? Well I'm glad you asked my feeble minded friend. I guess I could not come up with a better name for a chapter, but I will dive into the game's impact on players. We are not just talking about what Dota does to a player who loses after 120 minutes, we will get into that later, but over ever detail that this game offers to us, there is no two sounds that sound perfectly the same, and if you find it congratulations my obscure friend, you had to search for that probably, the sound design of this game is beak. Don't get me started on the satisfaction of landing 5 Maneco, the crackling sound of Mana Void popping on a drained silencer, the terrifying Night Stalker's dark ascension or even the voice lines of some heroes, making you shiver. But why do we feel that Dota is the best and the worst game at the same time? Well you see, either way, if we want it or not, we are locked into this game once we start it, in ranked you won't leave a game. Unless it's safe to leave, and even then most players stay until the bitter end. We invest time and dedication and the cruel reality of the game is that at best 50% of the participating players can win, and sometimes wins feel like massive L's. So imagine yourself in this scenario, you play your heart out, you make one small mistake, which you can most of the time not admit, and you feel empty, you feel punished and robbed 35 minutes of your life gone in vain. If only your support would have given you more, enter X generic reason, or your core would have finished the game earlier. There is always a reason, to feel bad in Dota and only really one good reason to feel great, winning. 
It is such a crushing feeling of losing a game, when you land your big ultimates and still can't win, and we still come back, because Dota is not a casual game, it's a lifestyle, and we love it. Chapter 4. Final Thoughts. What do we conclude at the end of this essay? Is Dota a good game? Is it bad? Dota is what we make it out to be, personally for me it's a great game. I love it for being complex, non-linear and as much as people like to shit on the community, I frankly love it. Let's say 70% of the time, there is no other fandom that hates itself as much as Dota, but damn we are protective of our game. We as a community made it possible that a simple mod from 2003 still exists 21 years later, and we are still strong going. We made all this possible, and found friends along the way, more enemies too, but who counts those? Thank you ladies and gentlemen, for listening to my humble opinion, and to what probably thousands of people think.